Welcome back to Country Cow Designs. I'm Jo and at Country Cow Designs we create sewing patterns for bag makers. In this video we're going to be making our Toulouse pattern. So this isn't a new pattern to us. This is in fact a very old pattern and one of our most popular patterns that we've ever had. Um, possibly because it's one of our two pound patterns. We have a few in our range of two pound patterns for like introduction to Country Cow Designs. You can grab them from our website countrycowdesigns.com. This was the first one, it's beginner friendly, it comes in two sizes, so we've got the small and the tall, and it's a pretty straightforward bag design. So if you're new to bags, this is a really good place to start. We're gonna be making this just as it is in the pattern. So this has a magnetic snap top closure. If you really want to have a zip top closure, there is an extra video for that, an add-on video, so I'll link that now. And in this video, I'm going to be sewing it on my Janome HD9, which is a straight stitch machine. You can make this bag on a domestic machine because I've made plenty on my Benina 930. If you're looking for hardware for this pattern, you can get hardware kits from our website, which includes the magnetic snaps and the swivel hooks and everything that you need to make the bag. Stick around to the end of the video if you want to see our new pattern that will be coming out in a few weeks. Uh, but now we'll get started. Step one of the pattern is cutting and interfacing. So you're going to need to print your cutting chart, which is on page 23 of the pattern, and the pattern pieces up to page 35. So on the cutting chart, it tells you that you're going to need some exterior fabric, feature fabric, lining fabric, and then your foam stabilizer. For the small and the tall, it gives the different sizes that you need to cut. For any pattern pieces that aren't rectangles, that will be the tallest and widest point. It also tells you whether you need to interface each piece or not. On the pattern pieces, again it has the measurements for you, tells you how many pieces to cut out, so two pieces of feature fabric for this one. If it says cut on fold, that means that the pattern piece needs to be cut with the fabric folded, like that, so it will end up being twice the size when it's finished. And for the small size, you cut on the dash line. So you can just fold your pattern pieces on that dash line. And that means that in the future, if you want to make the tall version, then you've still got the pattern piece. You don't need to reprint it. You can tick off as you go, as you've cut everything out. So then you know when everything's done. And there's also labels that you can cut out and clip to each piece. So you know which pattern piece is which. So for this tutorial, my exterior fabric is this canvas, this bright floral canvas. For my feature fabric, I'm using a purple waxed canvas. And for my lining, I have two different fabrics. For the exterior slip pocket, I've got this gray kind of cotton. And for the main lining, I've got this stripes plain cotton fabric. I've interfaced everything according to the instructions and I've also cut out my foam stabilizers. I've also got my hardware, which is all listed in the pattern, what you need. And for this tutorial, I'm also gonna be adding the optional half moon magnetic snap on the exterior pocket. Step two of the pattern is the strap. So I'm going to link here for a video on how to make the strap because I know most of you don't want us to go through the strap in this video, but if you want the instructions for the strap, you can either follow the written instructions in the pattern or you can watch the video that's linked above. Step three is the strap anchors. And for this step, you're going to need your two strap anchor pieces and two D-rings. Because I'm working with wax canvas, I'm going to use an awl to mark the fabric rather than a fabric pen. Now, what you're gonna do, no matter what fabric type you're working with, you're going to mark each strap and anchor down the center like this. You're then going to fold the long edges into that center line. And for both of these, I'm going to top stitch down these long edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once those are top stitched, you need to put a stabilizer of some kind in between the layers. So I've got a little bit of Peltex that I'm gonna use. 
So I'll just trim that down so that it can fit within the gap. You could use foam or whatever stabilizer you have enough scraps of. This is just to add some strength to these strap anchors. So you just slip that inside and then you're gonna wrap the whole thing around the D-ring and clip it together. So when you're doing this, you don't want the stabilizer to go all the way into the end because it'll just build up a bit of bulk in the bag. So I'm leaving mine about an inch short from the end. Now I'm going to set rivets just below the D-ring to keep it in place. Now, if you don't have access to rivets or you don't have the tools to set them, you can just stitch a row of stitching right below the D-ring to keep it in place. Now those are done, you can set one of those aside and we'll move on to step four. Step four is the exterior front. For this step, you're gonna need one of your strap anchors, one of your exterior top panels, which will be made of a feature fabric, your exterior pocket piece, your lining pocket piece, your lining bottom panel, and the foam stabilizer for the front panel. If you want to add a feature magnetic snap to the front pocket, you'll also need that. So the first thing we're going to do is sew the two pocket pieces together. So grab your lining and exterior pocket pieces, place those right sides together and line them up and clip those together. We're now going to sew this top edge, including the curve, with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. If you struggle with sewing curves, you could draw the seam allowance on with a pen beforehand. So to ensure this curve sits neatly when we turn it out, we want to trim the seam allowance a bit. So the first thing you want to do is kind of trim it down where these points are. And then I'm going to use pinking shears along this curve, but you can alternatively just use a pair of scissors to cut small triangles into it. Be careful not to clip your stitches as you do this. Now you can turn your pocket right sides out and you wanna make sure that you really push out that top curve edge and all along the curve, just make sure that the seam is sitting really nice and neatly. You can use a tool for this if you prefer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take mine over to the iron and give this top seam a good press and also just roll it between my fingers to get it to lay nice and neat. Now that's pressed, I'm going to top stitch this edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Set that aside for just a moment and grab your top piece and your bottom piece for the exterior. Now this bottom piece should be a lining fabric because what's going to happen is this is going to go over the top there. So grab these two pieces, line up the bottom edge of this one with the top edge of this. So this is how you want it to look when they're finished. And then just clip those together like that. Sew those together with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now we want to press that seam open on the back. We're gonna butterfly it open like this. And then top stitch it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance on each side so that you're sewing down those seams. Once that's top stitched, we need to attach the magnetic snap. So I've got one of these beach magnetic snaps. So these are available on our website. And I'm just gonna get the main piece here. Now, this is very similar to a half moon magnetic snap. First thing we want to do, we want to put some padding in here for it. So 
I'm going to slip this in between the two layers and make sure that's centered. So you could glue that in place if you want to. I'm actually just going to hold it there for now. And I'm going to slip that over the top. So measure from both sides, make sure that's completely centered before we fix it in place. So when you're fitting these, you could use some fabric glue underneath to make sure it stays in place. I'm actually not going to this time. I'm just going to fit it as it is. So I've got an awl and I'm going to poke through these holes at the back to make somewhere for the screws to fit nice and neat. And then I've got the two tiny screws that come with it that will fit this in place. So on the back of your magnet should be a screw or something similar. What we're going to do is we're going to place the pocket on top of the lining piece. And what it should do is it should line up perfectly with that seam. I mean, it might not if you're, you know, cutting is an absolute perfection, but that's where we want it to be. Once you've got it lined up, you want to press down really hard on this so that it marks the fabric underneath. Okay, and you should see that you've got a little circle just there. So you want to mark that circle so that you don't lose it. And then grab the washer for the other side of the magnetic snap, place it over the mark and mark the side slits. Now we're going to cut these little slits through the fabric. If, like me, you're using cotton, you will probably want to use some fray check on those slits to make sure that they don't fray in the future. Push the female part of the magnetic snap through the slits that you've made. Now, for the back, we're going to want a little bit of stabilizer. This is just always really good to make sure that the magnetic snap has a, as much protection as possible. So any old stabilizer will do. I've got a piece of Peltex here. And then just put that on top, put your washer on and fold your prongs back. So flip that back over and connect your magnetic snap together. Now I'm going to clip this down the side and bottom. I'm going to baste the sides and the bottom with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. But both of the sides I'm going to do in the same direction. So I'm going to go from top to bottom. If you start over here at the top, go around and then go from the bottom to the top on this side, you can end up with a slightly skew if pocket because it slips very slightly as you're sewing. So I definitely recommend sewing both sides from the same direction. So I need to fit my strap anchor. The first thing I'm going to do is mark it half an inch up from the bottom edge. Then I'm going to measure and mark one and a quarter inches in from this right hand side on the main panel. Now what I'm going to do is place this strap anchor so that it's hanging down into the bag like this. It's touching the line on this side that I just made. And this is the half inch mark. We have this half inch overhang to add strength to the strap anchor. If it's the same size as the panel, you will have trouble with your straps not staying in place. And just baste that in place. Now we're ready to attach the foam stabilizer. So you're going to place your panel on top of the foam stabilizer and clip it all the way around. I'm going to base that on all four sides. I often find I get a little bit of stretch with cotton fabrics. So you'll notice I'm basting this foam side up because that way it will reduce any stretching. Now that's basted, I'm just going to fit my rivets for the pocket. Now I'm going to fit a rivet next to these top curve sections. 
If you prefer to, you can simply just sew this section down. It's just to give the um, pocket some extra security so it doesn't kind of sag because it's quite a big one. But what I'm going to do, because I'm using rivets, is punch a hole just here below the stitching. I'm going to use my Japanese hole punch for this. And then I'm going to put a rivet through each one. I'll take this over to my press and set those rivets. That's your front panel complete. You can set that aside and now we'll move on to step five. Step five is the exterior back and the exterior assembly. For this step, you're going to need your remaining strap anchor, your exterior base piece, the exterior top panel, the exterior bottom panel, your base stabilizer and your main panel stabilizer. I've also cut an extra piece of Peltex. Um, so I've cut this two and a quarter inches wide by seven and three quarter inches long. This is an optional extra. I'm gonna put it inside the base of my bag, which is just gonna make the base even sturdier. So if you want an extra sturdy base, you can just add this in. So this is just a piece of Peltex ultra firm stabilizer. So first of all, we're gonna start with the top and bottom panels. So if you align them as you want them when they're finished, so this is the top of this piece and this is the top of that piece. And then you just wanna flip them so they're right sides together and clip them together. And sew that with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So we're just gonna press that seam open. If you have a seam roller, this can be helpful, especially for wax canvas. And now we're going to top stitch it on each side of this seam with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now we need to fit the strap anchor. So I'm gonna mark the strap anchor half an inch up from the bottom edge. Then I'm gonna mark this top panel one and a quarter inches in from the right hand side. And I'm gonna place this strap anchor so it's on the mark, so it's touching it. And this half inch mark is in line with the top edge. So we've got a half inch overhang. And just baste that in place. Now grab your main panel stabilizer, place your panel on top of that and clip them together. And again, I'm going to sew this foam side up on my machine to ensure there's no stretching as I sew it. So grab your other exterior main panel we're gonna mark the centers on the bottom of each of these. So you can simply fold it in half and then mark it. Now we're gonna put these panels right sides together. And you actually wanna make sure that your center marks are matching at the bottom because this will ensure that the base will fit correctly. And now just clip these together. Now that's clipped, we're gonna sew just the sides with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Where all the seams join between the top and bottom panels, it can get a little bit bulky. So if you need to, you can use a hump jumper to make sure that you get over that seam without dropping any stitches. I also like to sew a second seam just inside the first one. This adds strength to the seam, but I do start and stop about an inch from the top and bottom because that way you can press your seams open nice and easy at the end. An optional step now is to rip out your basting stitches and then trim the foam out of this seam. So it doesn't take as long as you might think. You just need to get a good grip on those basting stitches. And then you can just trim it out with a small pair of scissors. Now, if you don't want to do this for the whole of the seam, you could just do it at the top just to remove the bulk from the seams later. Alternatively, another option would have been before we basted it to simply like cut a triangle at the top out and then that way it wouldn't have been in the seams at all. If you haven't already, you'll need to baste 
your base stabilizer to the exterior base. You don't need to baste the little corners, just the four main sides will do fine. Now to fit the base, we need to mark the centers on all four edges. Now grab your main panels. And what we need to do is put the base right sides together with the main panel. And we're gonna match the center mark on the main panel to the center mark on the base. And clip that together. Now we're going to sew this and we're going to start from the cut-in of this corner, backstitch well and sew all the way along down to this cut-out corner. The cutouts are 3 eighths of an inch, the same as the seam allowance. So if you're using the seam allowance, you should start and finish in line with those cutout corners. Okay, so now what we're going to do is match the other side of the base to this other main panel. So again, you want to match up those center marks and clip it in place. And again, we're going to sew this with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance from the, each corner to each corner. I find this easiest to do it with the base side up on my machine, but this is going to be a little bit more awkward than that side. Okay, so now those two sides of the base are in, what we need to do is snip into your main panels where the base is. So where this cutout is just here, we're snipping in just 3 eighths of an inch, no more than that. So we're snipping up to this corner here. And you want to do this with both sides. Once you've done that, you can bring your base up and it should match The section that you've just cut. So your center mark should match the side seam like that and you can just clip that in place and then it should all match up on the edges like this. So what we're going to do is take that over to the machine and we're going to sew that with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Sewing these short ends of the base is a little bit tricky so if you don't get it perfect first time just flip it over and sew it again from the other side because often you'll find that where you start it's hardest to get the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. If you flip it over you can then correct the seam allowance on the second seam. Okay so if you want to for a really neat finish you can now trim the foam out of all of your seam allowances but that's totally up to you. So that's step six finished now we'll move on to the lining. Step seven is the lining zip pocket. For this step you're going to need your seven inch zip, your zip pocket facing, your zip pocket lining piece, your card slots piece, and one of your main lining panels. So the first thing you're gonna work on is your zip pocket facing. And there's a diagram in the pattern which you need to copy onto the wrong side of your zip pocket facing. Now fold that in half and just give it a press with your fingers to find the center. And do the same thing with your main lining panel. Now you want to match up those centre creases and you want this to be two and a quarter inches down from the top edge and just pin it in place. If you're using waterproof canvas or a non-healing fabric, make sure that you only pin within this box. You'll notice with your main panel that it's not a rectangle. It has these sort of tabs at the top. So make sure that you're measuring down from the top edge, which is the wider part. Now that's pinned in place, I'm going to sew this rectangle, but I'm going to start midway along this line. When I get to the corners, I'm going to reduce my stitch length to about a one, a really, really short stitch length just around the corners here. This will help give a neater finish to my facing. Now that's sewn, we're going to cut the center line and the two triangles. And you need to cut as close as you can to these corners without cutting your stitches. Once that's cut, we need to push this through to the other side. 
But first of all, what I like to do is give it a good press. And if you've got your iron out, you can use that. So I crease it where the stitching is and give it a press on all four sides. Then you need to push it through to the back. Now you're definitely going to want an iron to do this. So you need to press each edge to get a nice flat finish. Give it a press with an iron. Do this on all four sides and then flip it over and press it from the front as well. So this is how it should look once you've pressed it. Uh, my black lines are leaking onto my white. This will serve me right for buying cheap fabric. So there you go. So set that aside for a moment and grab your card slots piece. Now this should have markings on it, which are on the pattern piece. And this is the top. So you can mark it with a T so you don't get confused. What we're going to do is fold it right sides together on that very first line from the top. Make sure that your edges are lining up. That's how you know that you've got it straight and press that with an iron. So for the next line, we're going to go wrong sides together for the fabric. So I'm going to fold it that way. And press that. Then we're going to go right sides together, wrong sides together, right sides together, wrong sides together till you get to the end. And this is how it should look when it's finished. So you've got one, two, three folds. Sorry, striped fabric wasn't the best idea for this. So if you want to top stitch each of your card slots, you could do that now. I actually prefer not to do mine, but if you do, you just need to pull them away and top stitch them one at a time. So what I'm going to do is flip this over and on this bottom edge, I'm going to fold it up by about a quarter of an inch and press it. So that's going to make it slightly easier when we close up the pocket later because we're turning the whole bag out through the pocket. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to clip this down the sides and then I'm going to baste the sides to hold it all together. When you're doing this, do it from top to bottom on both sides or bottom to top. If you do it from different directions, you will end up with a slightly skew if card slots. Now that's basted, we need to mark the line to sew up the centre and divide the card slots. So I've marked the centre on the bottom of my card slots. However, this is going inside a zip pocket. When the zip is open, the zip pull is going to block the entrance to the pocket over here. So we want our card slots to be slightly to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark not up the centre, but an eighth of an inch to the left of the centre. Make sure you're using an erasable fabric pen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew up this line across one very small stitch and then come back down about a needle's width away from the first line. Now that's sewn, I'm going to mark where I want my card slots to be. So we're marking two and a half inches away from this sewn line. Now I'm just going to stitch up each of these lines. You can either sew these lines all the way up to the top or you can just stop at the top of the card slots totally up to you and won't make a difference to your finished bag. Now grab your zip. Your card slots need to be right side up and then you want to place the zip right side up on the top edge, line it up with that top edge and your zip pull should be closing to the left. Now sew that with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. A scant is a little bit less than a quarter inch. Okay so grab your other zip pocket piece and what we need to do, first of all, is fold the bottom edge up by a quarter inch, same as we did on this one, and then just press that in place. Now flip your lining pocket piece over and with it right side up, 
place the zip right side up on the top edge, but we're doing the unsewn side of the zip. So it's going to go like this. You're going to end up with your pocket pieces right sides together. Make sure that they line up neatly on the sides and then clip the zip to that top edge. And sew that top edge with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now that's attached, the right side of the zip will be on the wrong side of the fabric, and that's correct. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this flat so that the zip lays flat. It's gonna make it much easier to fit. So take it over to your iron and give it a good press. Watch out for the metal zip pull if that ends up getting quite hot. And if you're using a plastic zip, be careful not to melt it. I would recommend then checking it on an off cut of zip before you start. Okay, so that's as flat as I can get it for now. What I'm gonna do is use some Fabri-Tac glue. Um, so just any kind of fabric glue is absolutely fine. I'm gonna run it along the edge of the zip and this will help it stay in place when we're sewing it. So you don't wanna use much glue because you don't want it seeping out and being on show. Now we're gonna take the main panel with that facing that we created. We're gonna place it on top, making sure it's centered. And just stick that in place. Now I'll take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew with an eighth of an inch all around this facing. So to finish off this pocket, we're just going to flip this over. Now, I've really messed up my cutting here, but your pockets should be relatively the same length when they're folded. Mine's not, so I'm just going to refold this to match. So we want them both folded up to the wrong side and then just clip the sides together. Now I'm going to just sew the sides, back stitching really well at the bottom. Now to do this, you can take it over to your machine and just lift it up like that as you sew through. And if you've used a little bit too much glue around your facing, you will notice that you kind of have to peel it away, but that's absolutely fine. We're gonna sew from top to bottom using a quarter inch seam allowance. It does get bulky as you're sewing through the card slots, so if you need to, you can change to a larger size needle. So that's your lining zip pocket done. Let's move on to the next step. Step eight is lining assembly. For this step, you're gonna need your two main panels, your lining base, two pieces of scrap stabilizer or foam for the back of your magnetic snap, and of course, your magnetic snap. So first of all, you need to measure and mark one and a half inches down from the top edge and centered on both of your main panels. You're then going to grab your magnetic snap washer and place that centered over your mark and mark those side slits. Snip those with a small pair of scissors. And if you're using cotton, you might wanna put some fray check or something similar on those slits just to stop them fraying. You could always just use a bit of fabric glue if you prefer. So you can do this either way around, but I'm gonna put the female magnetic snap through this one. So I'm gonna push it through the slits that I've made. I'm going to cut the slits on my stabilizer piece as well. And just pop that on the back. Place the washer over and push those prongs to the side. Might find it easier to use a heavy object of some kind. Then I'm gonna fit the other side of my magnetic snap to this panel exactly the same way. Once those are both fitted, we need to mark the center on the bottom edge of each panel. So you can just fold this in half and mark the center. Now place these two panels right sides together. Make sure that magnetic snap is done up and clip them together. And we're going to sew just the sides with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do not increase your seam allowance here because as you can see, this tapers in to make sure that the lining is smaller than the exterior and fits neatly. 
So sometimes with other bags, we'll increase the seam allowance to give it a tighter fit, but you do not want to do that on this bag. Now we're going to snip into where these curves are. This is just going to help the curve to sit neater. So I'm actually just going to do a few snips. My scissors aren't very sharp. They're not really designed for this. Be careful not to cut your stitching as you're doing this. Now grab your lining base piece. You need to mark the centers on all four edges. And same as we did with the exterior, we're gonna match these center marks to the center marks on the main panel and clip it together. Now we need to sew that with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance from where the cutout corner is to the next cutout corner. Now that's sewn, match the center mark on the other side of the base to the other lining panel and clip together. And same as before, we're going to sew that with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did on the exterior and we're going to snip in right next to the base where this cutout is. And we're going to do it for all four cutouts. Now if you bring this side of the base up, it should match pretty well to your main panels. And you can press that seam open like that and clip it together. Do the same thing with the other side. Press that side seam open and match it to the center mark on the base and clip together. Now we're gonna sew through this with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance on both sides. Now we're on to the final step, which is the final assembly. Now, before I assemble my whole bag, what I'm gonna do is press the seams open on the lining all the way down the sides with an iron. This will help it to lay really flat inside the bag. Alternatively, you can trim all of your seams a little bit if you want, just down to about a quarter of an inch. Also on the exterior, I'm gonna press the seams open at the top here, and I'm just gonna baste those open with my sewing machine. This will make it lay flat when I'm sewing it and when I'm top stitching it it'll just make sure everything stays nice and flat. So now my seams are open I'm going to grab my lining and open up this zip pocket then I'm going to turn the whole lining so it's right sides out And you need to pop that inside the exterior. So I'm gonna put it, so the zip pocket is on the back of the bag. That way I've got a pocket on each side. So your lining is now right sides together with your exterior. And what you wanna do is match up these side seams and clip them together. Okay, now your lining should fit perfectly inside. You can just check it like this. If for some reason it's not fitting perfectly, you can always go back and just tighten the seams at the top because you want to make sure that they are matching well. So what I like to do is I like to pull it tight and then get the center clipped first and then work my way around the rest. So you're going to clip the whole of the top edge together. Now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew around the entire top edge with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then I'm gonna sew a second row of stitching just inside the seam allowance, just to add strength to that seam. So I actually changed my thread colour to match the fabric as well, so that when I turn this out, if my stitches are showing just a tiny bit because my tension's off, then at least the stitches will be matching the fabric and it won't be quite as obvious as the white. So now I'm going to remove my basting stitches and just trim the foam out of this top seam. Okay, so we're almost there. Now just make sure that your seams are still sitting flat. Um, from where we basted them and things like that because this will make a huge difference to your top stitching. 
Once you're happy with that, just reach into the bag and you want to reach through the zip pocket and grab the exterior. And we're going to pull the whole thing through this little pocket, which is going to feel impossible at first and then it's suddenly going to happen. Okay, so there you go. If you are using um, like really thick materials, vinyl or something for your bag, you may just want to leave one of the sides, like you could just sew just the edges and leave most of it unsewn. That way you can pull it through there. Then you can pull it that bit through the pocket and sew it up. So that might be a slightly easier way if your bag's really thick. If you're working with cotton and canvas, you should be absolutely fine. So what you need to do now, spend a bit of time pushing out all of the corners and the seams in that exterior. So if you've trimmed the foam out of all of your seams, you'll notice that you can get the seams to look neater. If not, you kind of have slight bulkiness to the seams, which isn't a problem at all. But um, just be aware that if you want to reduce that bulkiness, that extra, extra step of trimming the foam out does make a difference. So what we're gonna do is shove the zip pocket back in, and then we're gonna put the lining back into the bag. Now, we're gonna top stitch this before we close the lining because sometimes it's handy to be able to reach in through the pocket while it's open and neaten up your top seam. So shove your lining right in there. Now we need to get this top seam to sit nice and neat. What we can do is reach in through the pocket and then you can kind of push that seam out and get it to lay nice and flat. Then add a few clips and I'm just gonna do that around the whole of this top edge. Now I know that's a faffy extra step, but it will make a difference to how that top edge looks and also how easy it is to top stitch. So the other thing I do is stick my hands in and make sure that the lining is sitting snugly at the bottom. Okay, and now I'm ready to top stitch this. When you're top stitching, you're gonna be going through a lot of bulk. So you may need to increase the tension on your machine, but every machine's different and materials are different. So you might need to test this before you start to see how you get on. But if you're getting loopy stitches on the underneath side, that generally means you need to increase the tension. When you're top stitching, it's generally best to use a larger needle to use a slightly longer stitch length. I'm using a 4.5 stitch length. And also you may find it helpful to use a hump jumper when you get to the really bulky side seams. This will help you to avoid skip stitches. Okay, so there it is top stitched. Now what we need to do is close it up. But first of all, because I've got that extra base layer to make it extra sturdy, I'm gonna slip that in and that should fit on my exterior base. I'm also gonna get a bit of fabric glue. I'm gonna put that inside between the lining and the exterior and then just use it to stick the bases together so it gets a really snug fit. Okay, so I'm gonna pull my zip pocket out, being careful not to pull the lining that I just glued out at the same time. And I'm gonna to clip together those edges that we folded earlier. I'm gonna sew that together with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So because I used an air erasable pen for marking out the card slots, that will disappear on its own within the next few days. So I'm gonna shove that pocket back in, make sure it's sitting nice and neat. 
Okay, and then I'm going to take this over to the iron and give it a good press. So you probably guessed from the intro that this is the finished bag. There you go. So I really like how it turned out. Stripes, quite a nice contrast to the floral exterior. Um, but as I mentioned, I'm also going to show you our new pattern that comes out later this month. So this is our first little pattern. Uh, this is the Lamonza clutch. It's kind of like a clutch wallet, crossbody bag. It's got lots of different things. You can do a wristless strap like this one has, or you can have a crossbody strap, lots of different options. And on the inside, we've got zip pocket, loads of card slots, room for your phone, all that sort of thing. Um, so this is a really fun little pattern. I'm just gonna have a full video tutorial, just like all of our patterns. So keep an eye out in a couple of weeks time when this is released on our YouTube channel. See you soon.